Hi guys, this is Professor Camp coming to you. Gonna do a quick little cell transport review. And how we're gonna go about doing that is really me just giving you some good examples of cell transport, um, mainly via osmosis. And that's because osmosis really unites all of the concepts of how things move in and out of cells because you have to think about solute concentration and solutions. So we're not going to sit here and go through term review. Make sure you know all your terms for cell transport. Passive and active transport, the difference between those, the types of passive transport and so forth, the difference between what a solute means. Solute is really just a concentration of particles. So here we're going to look at an example where a gentleman is floating in the Dead Sea. Now this guy is floating in the Dead Sea. Dead Sea is actually not even a sea. Uh, it's a lake. Um, it's between uh, Jordan on its left, I believe, and Israel and Palestine on its right. And this lake is full of this sedimentary rock on the bottom, um, which is known as halite. And halite is just known as rock salt. So, as you might imagine, it's this big body of water that happens to be the lowest uh, below sea level. It's almost 500 feet below sea level because of the way it's kind of a hole in the earth. And this lake um, has the sedimentary or rock salt on the bottom that basically slowly leaches salt into it and really causes it to have an extremely high concentration of salt and it's one of the guarantees uh, that you're going to have higher salt concentration outside of the human body than in so as you might imagine I've drawn here these little black dots or particles just kind of symbolizing that there's a higher concentration of particles outside of this gentleman's body than there is inside so we can draw a few particles inside of his body as well so remember when we talk about diffusion and diffusion rates that particles want to move from high concentration to low concentration so in this case if the particles could they would move from outside of the water into his body, right? But remember, osmosis is the movement of water across the semi-permeable membrane, and in this example, that's this gentleman's skin. And as you might imagine, our skin doesn't allow any specific particle that to just cross it uh, without some form of restriction. Remember, super small particles have the ability to cross semi-permeable membranes. Things like uh, glucose, for example, and you know, remember glucose uses a transport protein. But in either case, water has the ability to just diffuse across your skin. So because of that, we know that these particles want to move from high concentration to low concentration, from outside of his body to inside his body, from the body of water into his body, but they can't, right? It's blocked by the skin. So what happens is the body naturally counteracts that by allowing the movement of water to occur. So the movement of water moves in the opposite direction that the solute particles would want to move if indeed they could. So if we know these particles want to move from high concentration outside of the body to inside the body, from high concentration to low concentration, but they can't, then water is going to move from inside the body to outside the body. So if water moves from outside the body, or inside the body to outside the body, that will help try and even out the concentration of these salt particles or solute particles in this example. As you might imagine, of course, the Dead Sea is just too salty for us to basically even it out with the amount of water that we have inside of our human body. And this actually allows um, an extreme flotation without any flotation devices. Uh, but more importantly, allows water to leave your body. So, as you might imagine, and most of you who have swam in the ocean for long periods of time probably felt really thirsty afterwards, and that's because water moves from inside of your body to outside of your body and dehydrates your tissues, which, of course, makes you thirsty. Now, remember, this is going to make your hands appear wrinkly, but due to the matrix of your skin, it can appear wrinkly even in freshwater sources. So, in fact, if we look at another example, let's say Zach Galifianakis inside of his bathtub full of his little pet ducks, then we can quickly realize that the skin also becomes wrinkly in fresh water. Now, let's look at how these particles move differently, though. So, if we look at how these particles move differently, we can see that there's, in this example, a much higher concentration of these salt particles inside of Zach's body. And... That's because humans, in general, are salty. Remember, salt is not the only solute particle inside of you. It's just the simplest example of that. So, 
Because of that, remember that in fresh water, there's very few solute particles, right? Maybe whatever uh, his little ducks have left behind in the bathwater. So we have these solute particles inside of his body, greater concentration inside of his body than outside of his body. If indeed they could move across his semipermeable membrane or skin, they would want to go from inside of his body to outside of his body into the water, but they can't. So what happens is that water moves to try and counteract this balance and balance these solute particles out. So water, in this case, moves into Zach's body. How awesome is that arrow right there? Maybe if we close it off, it'll make less ridiculous. Nope, it doesn't. In any case, water is going to move into Zach's body, trying to balance out the solute particle concentration, which indeed will cause his cells to swell, right? And because of the matrix of the human skin will also cause your hands to appear wrinkly even though water loss is not occurring. In this case, the cells are swelling as water is moving into his body and into his cells because he has a greater concentration of solute or salt particles or a combination of all the particles inside of his body inside of his body than there is outside in his bath water. So these examples of osmosis really just combine the concepts of the movement of items uh, into and outside of cells and how things are transported into and outside of cells and kind of unify all of these concepts together. If you have a good understanding of how these work and a good working of the terminology, then you'll be in extremely good shape for cell transport.